is a three. It is an emollient. When you say it's an emollient, it's a moisturizer. It's an occlusive. I'm going to explain this a little bit more. And it improves the skin surface. So let's see this one. Transepidermal water loss. When we say transepidermal water loss, it's the water that dissipates into the environment. Okay? Because your skin produces its own water. My water tayo sa skin. Hindi mo kailangan ng maraming maraming moisturizer kasi may sarili kang moisture from your skin. Ang problem is, our humid environment, our temperate climate pushes out or pulls out this water. That's what this transepidermal water loss is all about. So, if you're going to look at this, they compared several vegetable oil with petrolatum. The petrolatum is at the bottom most. This one. So when you look at after application, 30 minutes after, after application, you see the chance epidermal water loss is 5.08. It's least. pinaka konte yung chance epidermal water loss na compared with the other vegetable oil. Jojoba, soybean, avocado, almond oil, and paraffin. Okay? So, yan. Mineral oil lessens the chance epidermal water loss. Kaya siya emollient. Another one. This one, swelling. Okay, yung top layer ng skin, we call that the stratum corneum. Pag nilagyan mo ng tubig yung skin mo through bathing, that layer of the skin swells up. Namamaga. Pag namaga siya, ibig sabihin, it's trapping. It's trying to trap the water. Okay? So in this study naman, as I told you, mineral oil is a derivative, sorry, of petrolatum. So in this study, you'll see the swelling of the stratum corneum is highest here in the petroleum. Whereas the others, again, the jojoba oil, the paraffin oil, and the sweet almond oil, mababa lang yung pag-swell ng corneocytes, ng upper layer ng skin. So nung pinahin mo yung tubig, nilagay mo yung petrolatum, nag-swell yung upper layer. Ibig sabihin, nadagdagan ng moisture. Okay? And then, the occlusive property. Okay, this is a cartoon of your skin. The one that I wanted to remember is the upper layer of the skin. Nakita nyo to, yung hiwalay-hiwalay. Hindi kasi siya gel together very well. Kasi as it goes into the upper layer of the skin, mag exfoliate na siya. So what will mineral oil do is, there, may chemical property yung mineral oil. It has long alkyl groups. And these alkyl groups, this tail, gels or puts cements or glues this spaces on the upper layers of the skin. Kapag ka meron siyang glue, hindi magdi-dissipate yung moisture na galing dito sa, dito sa baba. Right? This is, this is what I'm trying to tell you. There's a moisture that's inherent to your skin. But the problem is, the atmosphere tries to pull it out. So what will mineral oil do is to put there that barrier. It's a barrier that will prevent this water from going out from increasing the chance of epidermal water loss. So that's the occlusive property of your mineral oil. And then lastly, the improvement of skin softness. This, they con compared mineral oil and fatty acid. The solid line, the solid line is the improvement in skin softness. And that's the mineral oil. This one is the fatty acid group. Okay, so what are the characteristics of your good skin cleanser? It should be mutually charged to no charge at all. It should use the least amount of skin stabilizers, no parabens, no formaldehydes, and it should be non-GMO. And it should have ingredients that act as emollient, and mineral oil is a very good option. So what are my take-home points? My take-home points is that if you want to maintain a good skin, good skin for yourself and for your children, it's always good to know are the probable skin diseases that this child or my child can encounter and how would I deal with it when it happens. And cleansing is always the key in keeping the skin healthy. So what are the characteristics of a skin cleanser? It should be an emollient. At the same time, it should, has, it should have the occlusive capacity and it should moisten, soften the skin. You don't like the parabens, you don't like the GMOs. So with